the 9,439th meeting of the Security Council is resumed. The provisional agenda for this meeting is the situation in the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with Rule 37 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure, I invite the representatives of Bahrain, Bangladesh, Belarus, Djibouti, Egypt, Eritrea, Indonesia, Israel, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Mali, Malaysia, Maldives, Mauritania, Nicaragua, Oman, Pakistan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, the Sudan, Turkey, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Yemen, and Zimbabwe to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. I propose that the Council invite the permanent observer of uh, the state uh, of uh, Palestine, of the observer state of Palestine to the United Nations to participate in the meeting in accordance with the provisional rules of procedure and the previous practice in this regard. There being no objection, it is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. <laughs> Members of the Council have before them document S slash 2023 slash 772 submitted by Bahrain, Bangladesh, Belarus, Djibouti, Egypt, Eritrea, Indonesia, Israel, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Mali, Malaysia, Maldives, Mauritania, Nicaragua, Oman, Pakistan, Qatar, the Russian Federation, Saudi Arabia, the Sudan, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Yemen, and Zimbabwe. I shall correct myself. Uh, Israel is not part of that list. And now give the floor to those members of the Council who wish to make statements before the vote. I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, Russia from the very outset called upon the Council to respond to the unprecedented exacerbation of the current crisis. Unfortunately, for five days, there were no shifts in that direction. We once again underscore that we condemn what took place on the 7th of October and the deaths of Israeli civilians, as well as the deaths of civilians in the Gaza Strip. Given that the number of killed and wounded is growing with every hour that passes, we cannot wait any longer, seeing how valuable time is being wasted with the repetition of the same discussions or inaction of the Council. And on the Friday, the um, 13th of October, we propose that the Council consider a brief, purely humanitarian draft resolution that we proposed. Its main element was a call for an immediate, durable and fully respected humanitarian ceasefire. As you will understand, without a ceasefire, it will not be possible for there to be any humanitarian efforts. Moreover, our draft stipulates condemning all violence and all terrorist attacks, the opening up of humanitarian corridors, and the safe release of all hostages. I underscore that no fundamental, well-argumented objections from hardly any members of the Security Council regarding our proposed initiative have been received. In general, only one delegation objected, and no substantive comments followed. On Saturday, the 14th of October, we asked the Presidency to schedule a vote on our draft for the 16th of October, and we opened the document up for co-sponsorship among the UN membership. We thank those delegations that co-sponsored our document. It is telling that our draft 
in addition to other countries, has been co-sponsored by member, many members from the Arab group. It was supported by Palestine as well. This is a purely humanitarian text, and we will not understand if anybody decides not to support it, exclusively from selfish geopolitical concerns. We call upon the members of the Council to support our draft. Thank you. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for their statement. The Council is ready to proceed to the vote on the draft resolution before it. We shall put the draft resolution to the vote now. Will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S slash 2023 slash 772 please raise their hand? Those against? Yes. yes. Abstentions? The result of the voting is as follows. Five votes in favor, four votes against, six abstentions. The draft resolution has not been adopted, having failed to obtain the required number of votes. I now give the floor to those members of the Council who wish to make statements after the vote. I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Mr. President, colleagues, we regret that the Council once again be has found itself a hostage uh, to, the e ego, so to the selfish intentions of the Western Bloc. Of countries. This is the only reason why it was not able to uh, send a clear, strong, and collective uh, message aimed at de escalation. And we're talking about the most serious explosion of violence over the past decades. Today, the entire world uh, waited with bated breath for the Security Council to take steps in order to put an end to the bloodletting. But the delegations of the Western countries have basically uh, stomped on those expectations. We believe that today's vote in the Security Council is very is very demonstrative. It it's, it, it clearly shows who are in favor of uh, a truce, a stop of indiscriminate bombing, and a provision of uh, humanitarian assistance, and the, and who is uh, uh, still in favor of blocking a, a a single common message from the Security Council for purely selfish uh, and, um, interests and political interests. Uh, based on the results of the vote and the comments, no one should have any further illusions. We believe that independently of the outcome of the vote on our draft, it in any case fulfilled its task. It has contributed to, a, to launching a substantive discussion in the Security Council on this topic. Without uh, uh, our encouragement, uh, everything would probably uh, have been limited to... Uh, empty discussions. We are extremely concerned by the unprecedented humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza and the very high risk of uh, the conflict spreading. Thank you.
I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for their statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. Just over a week ago, terror was unleashed on Israel by Hamas, whose stated purpose is to destroy Israel and kill Jews. This was the worst massacre of Jewish people since the Holocaust. And I want to say that again. This was the worst massacre of Jewish people since the Holocaust. It was an appalling human tragedy that has brought to the surface painful scars left by a millennia of anti-Semitism. Hamas terrorists slaughtered more than a thousand civilians, including American citizens, entire families, children, babies, and the elderly. And Hamas took innocent people hostage, including American citizens and the citizens of several members of this council. The brutality of Hamas brings to mind the most heinous atrocities committed by ISIS. And Hamas, Hamas's actions have led to the dire humanitarian crisis facing the people of Gaza. Civilians should not have to suffer for Hamas's atrocities. And this council and the entire international community has a responsibility to help address this humanitarian crisis, unequivocally condemn Hamas, and reaffirm Israel's inherent right to self-defense under the UN Charter. Unfortunately, Russia's resolution presented today does not meet all of these responsibilities. Russia's resolution put forward without any consultations make no mention of Hamas, none. By failing to condemn Hamas, Russia is giving cover to a terrorist group that brutalizes innocent civilians. It is outrageous, it is hypocritical, and it is indefensible. Colleagues, the United States could not support Russia's resolution, which in, an, it, in ignoring Hamas's terrorism dishonors victims. We agree that this council should take action, but we have to get it right, and we'll work intensively with all members on the council to do so. Colleagues, the vast majority of families in Gaza are suffering through no fault of their own. As I've said, Hamas set the humanitarian crisis in Gaza in motion, and we cannot allow this council to unfairly shift the blame to Israel and excuse Hamas for its decades of cruelty, period. As we speak, Secretary Blinken and the White House are engaged in intensive discussions with the highest levels of the Israeli government and other countries in the region to secure the immediate and unconditional release of hostages and facilitate humanitarian access and relief. And we're actively engaged with other partners in the region and the United Nations to help meet the needs of people in Gaza. It is critical that civilians have access to essential food, water, medicine, and shelter. Let me repeat, it is critical. We have called on countries in the region to allow and facilitate full, safe, and unhindered humanitarian access in Gaza, in line with the principles of humanity, impartiality, neutrality, and independence. The United States is proud to be the largest international humanitarian donor to the Palestinian people. And yesterday, the United States announced the appointment of Special Envoy David Satterfield, who will lead U.S. diplomatic efforts to promote the safety of civilians and urgently address this humanitarian crisis in coordination with the United Nations and U.S. partners. We're doing all we can to help facilitate access to basic necessities, including food, water, and medicine. 
Colleagues, as President Biden made clear, we're working with Israel to ensure that they have what they need to defend the Israeli people, rescue hostages, and take necessary action to hold terrorists accountable for these attacks. The United States has reiterated to our Israeli partners the need to protect civilian life consistent with international humanitarian law. Protection of civilians and the protection of people who are trying to get to safety must be a central focus for everyone involved. We will continue to urge our Israeli partners to work to minimize the risk of civilian casualties. The bottom line is this. You cannot claim to stand with the Palestinians and their legitimate aspirations if you do not stand squarely against Hamas. Hamas does not stand for the Palestinian people's rights to dignity and self-determination. The path of terror that Hamas is engaged on has not improved the life of a single person, not, nor done anything to advance peace and stability. On the contrary, all Hamas has ever brought to the Palestinian people in the region is misery, chaos, and destruction. Colleagues, over the coming days and weeks and months, let us work together to prevent the conflict from spreading and addressing this humanitarian crisis. And let us work together to hold Hamas accountable for its terrorist acts against Israel and for standing in the way of the peace and stability that Israelis and Palestinians alike deserve. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for their statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Japan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we voted against the resolutions, not mainly for the contents of the resolution. Of course, the resolution could, be, could have been improved if it's put in a larger context and the perspectives. And we are second to none in caring the humanitarian situation on the ground. We are second to none in caring the human rights of Palestine as well as Israelis. Our track record of cooperation in the country explains that. But we voted against because the way the resolution was handled. We still do not understand why Russian Federation, our esteemed colleague, insisted to put the resolution to vote while there is a chance for further engagement by which we could have avoided showing the disunity, disunity of the Council. And that is something we have witnessed today. And I don't think it's helpful. It's not helpful to anyone. I think we have to make clear and we have to remind that resolution itself not is an end in itself. We need to have a resolution, united resolution, that could really deliver things on the ground to help the people, Palestinian people. But this was not, unfortunately, the case. So this is the reason we voted against. Thank you. I thank the representative of Japan for their statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom. Thank you, President. The United Kingdom is outraged at Hamas terror attacks in Israel and supports Israel's right to self-defense in line with international law. We're also working urgently to respond to the deteriorating humanitarian situation in Gaza. We have voted no on the draft resolution put forward by the Russian delegation. We cannot support a resolution which fails to condemn Hamas terror attacks. As my Prime Minister said earlier today, Hamas actions were an existential strike at the very idea of Israel 
as a safe homeland for the Jewish people. It is unconscionable for this council to ignore the largest terror attack in Israel's history. We remain clear too that all possible measures on the ground must be taken to ensure civilian casualties are minimized and to facilitate humanitarian aid. President, the gravity of the situation requires serious council discussion. This draft and this process was not a serious attempt to find council consensus. So we look forward to continuing consultations on the basis of the presidency's proposals. I thank you. I thank the representative of the United Kingdom for their statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Malta. Thank you, President. Malta abstained on this draft on this resolution. The text proposed by the Russian Federation left out important elements that also need to be recognized and addressed by this Council. While fully cognizant of the need for dire humanitarian relief to reach the people of Gaza without further delay, Malta notes that the text excludes crucial elements that are currently impacting the situation on the ground. We believe that these also need to be addressed. We reiterate our condemnation in the strongest possible terms of the terrorist acts perpetrated by Hamas on Israel. We understand that Israel has the right to live in peace and security. It has the right to self-defense, but always in line with humanitarian and international law and in accordance with the principles of distinction and proportionality. With complete understanding of the urgency of the issue, Malta remains determined in engaging in a constructive manner on the way forward. We stress the need for this Council to take action on the situation, which is of grave concern. Thank you. I thank the representative of Malta for their statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Ecuador. Thank you very much, Mr. President. In this intervention, I'm going to refer to the draft resolution on which we've just voted. My delegation, Mr. President, uh, regrets that the Russian Federation has, has put to a vote of the Council a draft resolution that was not uh, the subject of a pro process of negotiations, and therefore, consequently, only reflects the position of the uh, proposing state. We, uh, the text was put in blue in spite of the requests of several members of the council for an extension uh, of the time necessary to, co to consider it, even though there were some unresolved concerns. And the president of the council at the same time was making an effort to incorporate the points of view of all the members uh, of the Council in a common text uh, in pursuant to a collective appeal made uh, at our meeting this Friday. It has been stated uh, uh, very correctly that there are two inseparable dimensions of the tragedy that we're witnessing. However, the draft resolution of the Russian Federation does not mention or even less condemns the terrorist attacks of Hamas, which is the direct cause of the escalation of violence and the consequent humanitarian crisis. Nor does it contain any mention of international humanitarian law and the obligation to respect that law, or the urgency or the seriousness of the situation. And that seriousness cannot in any way be used to obtain, to, to score political points or, or ephemeral victories. This council should adopt resolutions that seek to put an end to the human suffering in a serious and constructive way. In addition, Mr. 
president. We would like to note that all the elements of the text of the Russian Federation were taken on board in the draft resolution negotiated by the Brazilian presidency and that are continuing to be the subject of consultations. For these reasons, we abstained on the draft resolution presented by the Russian Federation. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Ecuador for their statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Switzerland. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Since the 7th of October, Switzerland has firmly condemned the acts of terror, indiscriminate attacks, and hostage-taking carried out by Hamas against the Israeli population. We deplore the deaths of thousands of civilians, including hundreds of children in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory, notably Gaza, and we express our most sincere condolences to their loved ones, as well as to those of the members of staff of the United Nations and other humanitarian organizations who have died in the line of duty. We commend the courage of their colleagues that remain engaged in a large-scale humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Hundreds of thousands of civilians have had to evacuate their homes and, like the rest of the people of Gaza, are currently in an extremely precarious situation without protection and without access to essential services or external assistance. Mr. President, Switzerland shares the sense of urgency and the great deal of concern and therefore the need for the Council to act in unison faced with the situation in the Middle East. As the Secretary General has reminded us, de-escalation, the protection of civilians and the release of all hostages and the delivery of humanitarian assistance are priorities. With those priorities in mind, Switzerland nevertheless chose to abstain on the resolution submitted by Russia. As we reiterate, at every opportunity, and in particular in the context of large-scale humanitarian crises, Switzerland believes that this council cannot skimp, even in emergencies, or perhaps above all in emergencies, cannot skimp on a clear reference to international humanitarian law. Even armed conflicts have rules. For Switzerland, the omission of a clear reference to international humanitarian law in a council resolution even though the situation is constitutive of an armed conflict, is simply not admissible. It is up to this Council to make sure that respect for international humanitarian law is a priority by calling upon all parties to respect the basic rules of the conduct of hostilities and humanitarian access, the protection of civilians and civilian infrastructure, operations and humanitarian personnel. Calls for respect for international humanitarian law must also help hold back a spiral of violence which could engulf the entire region. For that reason, we remain actively we will remain actively and constructively committed to giving pride of place to the rules of international humanitarian law in alternative, the alternative proposal submitted by your delegation, Mr. President. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for the vast work that you have already done to find consensus among this Council. We are aware of the vast effort of compromise that still needs to be made in order to resolve the outstanding issues, and we hope that the Council will quickly be able to unify its efforts in order to adopt a resolution that goes in that direction. We count on the constructive uh, engagement of all members of this Council. Thank you. I thank the representative of Switzerland for their statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of China. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the new round of conflict between Palestine and Israel continues to escalate, which has already caused heavy civilian casualties and humanitarian crisis. Its spillover effect is impacting regional peace and stability. China is deeply concerned about this. We condemn all acts that harm civilians and oppose any violation of international law. We support the Security Council in playing a responsible role and support all efforts that aim to facilitate de-escalation of the conflict and restoration of peace. We welcome all initiatives conducive to protecting civilians and easing the humanitarian crisis. Based on this position, we voted for the draft resolution that was put to vote. 
In light of this grave situation, China calls for stopping the fighting as soon as possible, preventing it from spreading endlessly. And avoiding further deterioration of the situation, military means are not the way out. Violence for violence will only lead to an endless vicious cycle. China calls on relevant countries to take an objective and just position, hit the brakes, so that we could avoid a large-scale conflict and humanitarian disaster, and avoid causing an even bigger blow to regional and international security. In light of this grave situation, China calls for observing the international humanitarian law and making all efforts to ensure the security of civilians. The protection of civilians in armed conflict is a red line under international humanitarian law. Civilians should not be the target of military operations. The indiscriminate use of force is unacceptable. The maintenance of one's own security cannot come at the cost of harming innocent civilians. The safety of UN staff and humanitarian workers must be guaranteed. China supports diplomatic and mediation efforts so that the hostages can be released at an early date. In light of this grave situation, China calls for the opening of a humanitarian relief corridor as soon as possible to avoid a more serious humanitarian disaster. We are seriously concerned about the consequences of Israel's imposition of a full siege of on Gaza and its order of an emergency evacuation of the population in northern Gaza. We hope that Israel heeds the appeals of the international community and resume the water, electricity, and fuel supply to Gaza and stop the collective punishment of the people in Gaza. We support the opening of a humanitarian corridor at an early date, so that food, medicine, and other humanitarian relief supplies could be de delivered in a timely and smooth manner. We appreciate the efforts by Egypt and other countries concerned in this regard. At the same time, China calls on the international community to increase its input and support UN humanitarian agencies in continuing their work in Gaza. China will provide emergency humanitarian assistance to. Gaza through the UN and bilateral channels. Mr. President, the Security Council has a primary responsibility to maintain international peace and security, and should play its due role in resolving the current crisis. It is also the common expectation of the international community for the Council to reach consensus as soon as possible and adopt real measures. In the past few days, Council members have kept close communication on the Palestine-Israel situation. The draft. Resolution proposed by Russia demonstrates the overall direction of the Council's focus on humanitarian concerns and the protection of civilians, which was co-sponsored by many countries, including Arab countries such as Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Qatar. We greatly regret the fact that the Council failed to agree on this draft resolution. Humanitarian issues should not be politicized. The protection of civilians. Should be a priority for all parties. The council, in its past dealings with complex issues, usually would start with the humanitarian component. The current conflict is spreading, and suffering is continuing. The council should not give it up, give up its effort in this regard. Brazil also proposed a draft resolution. We welcome that. We hope that all parties, out of a responsible and constructive spirit, continue to seek consensus and take more active actions to ease the tension and avoid a humanitarian disaster, so as to demonstrate in earnest the responsibility and mission of the Security Council and make sure that it is able to stand the test of morality and conscience. Mr. President, the Chinese President Xi Jinping has highlighted on many occasions that a fundamental way to resolving the Palestine question is to establish an independent state of Palestine. History has time and again proven that for the Israel-Palestine situation, the re repeated outbreak of crisis is fundamentally due to the fact that the basis of the two-state solution keeps being eroded. The Middle East peace process has veered from the right track. And relevant UN resolutions haven't been effectively implemented. 
when dealing with this new round of conflict between Palestine and Israel, the international community must go beyond the fragmented case-by-case crisis management model and persevere towards the fundamental direction of the two-state solution and make greater efforts toward the comprehensive and lasting solution to the question. Since the outbreak of the crisis, China has actively conducted efforts to facilitate the ease of tension and actively promote peace talks. Our Foreign Minister Wang Yi has communicated extensively with all relevant parties to elaborate on China's policy and position the special envoy of the Chinese government on the Middle East will visit regional countries this week to conduct mediation work. China will always stand on the side of peace, on the side of justice, and on the side of international law. We're ready to work with the international community to make unremitting efforts to stop the fight in Gaza at an early date and realize peaceful coexistence of Palestine and Israel and lasting peace and security in the Middle East. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of China for their statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Gabon. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Gabon voted in favor of a draft resolution which calls for a humanitarian ceasefire, a draft resolution that firmly condemns violence and hostilities targeted at civilians and acts of terrorism a draft resolution that calls for the unconditional release of hostages, a draft resolution which calls for unfettered access for humanitarian assistance to the civilian population that needs it. We are convinced that this is an action that responds to the immeasurable despair and an extremely serious crisis which in the space of a few days has caused thousands of deaths and immeasurable human distress. This is an action which, following our firm condemnation of the barbaric attacks against Israel on the 7th of October, an action which is in lockstep with our obligations under international humanitarian law. We regret that the Council was not able to reach consensus on the draft resolution. We must certainly show greater engagement and commitment to find a just solution, a just response that is in line with our mandate to this humanitarian distress. We must show greater commitment to silence the guns and to restore responsibility. We must show greater engagement to find a lasting solution to the severity of the humanitarian situation, which is something that our Security Council must address in order to avoid a catastrophe with irreparable consequences. Thank you. I thank the representative of Gabon for their statement. And I'll give the floor to the representative of the United Arab Emirates. Mr. President, long before the unjustifiable Hamas attack on Israel on 7th of October, Gaza was already one of the most desperate places on earth to live. All council members have rightly condemned the indiscriminate murder of innocent Israeli civilians and the taking of 199 of them hostage, including children. We reiterate that condemnation here. But Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people or the people of Gaza who are suffering immensely today. And that is why council unity is so desperately needed on this file. In January of this year, the UN assessment of humanitarian needs in Gaza stated that 1.3 million people required aid for their basic survival. Half of those were children. Almost 60% of the need ranged between severe and catastrophic. In the past decade alone, Gazans have lived through three rounds of major conflict. The children of Gaza have lost hope. That nightmare was Gaza's lot 10 months before this outbreak. And today, civilians in Gaza are once again facing a ruinous war with nowhere safe to go. Gaza, one of the most densely populated places on earth, is besieged, with no access to fuel, electricity, food, water, or medical supplies. 
Two million people are now relying on a solitary pipeline for water as none of the three desalination plants can operate without power. And against this terrible backdrop, the international community must recognize that the call for the evacuation of more than one million people who have nowhere safe to go and no assistance for what it is, an unjustified demand unmeetable in its nature. Therefore, there is work for this council to do beyond making statements. At a minimum, this council should be able to come together around the need to protect all civilians, the unconditional release of all hostages, and the safe provision of humanitarian assistance. Access to fuel, food, water, medical aid, and other basic necessities must be fully restored. We must create a framework for rapid, unimpeded, and safe humanitarian access for the brave workers who are risking their lives today on the ground. The call for humanitarian ceasefires is essential for the realization of all of the above. The draft resolution put forward by the Russian delegation responds to these specific humanitarian needs. That is why the United Arab Emirates voted in favor of it, and that is why we are disappointed that it could not commend the support of the Council today. We thank the Presidency for their efforts, and we hope that we will be able to come together quickly and with one voice on this file for those who so desperately need it on the ground. Mr. President, we believe this Council should be able to find unity on two things. International humanitarian law must be upheld, indiscriminate attacks must be rejected and are unjustifiable, and the cycle of violence overall must end. The events of the last nine days have made it painfully clear that without a determined political horizon, the specter of bloodshed will continue to haunt both Israelis and Palestinians. Mahmoud Darwish, the late Palestinian poet, once wrote that a life only defined by the absence of its antithesis, death, is no life at all. Palestinians and Israelis deserve not only to live, which is the bare minimum, but to thrive side by side in their own independent, prosperous, and secure states. Thank you. I thank the representative of the United Arab Emirates for their statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Albania. Thank you, Mr. President. 7 October 2023 will remain a dark day, not only for the Israelis and its people, but for the entire world. With its monstrous terrorist acts, Hamas has committed the irreparable. Its appalling crimes have traumatized Israelis. They have terribly and profoundly hurt an entire nation. They have defied human conscience. They are and remain unjustifiable and unacceptable. They do not represent any nation, any religion, and they do not support and cannot support any cause. Albania recognizes the severity and the urgency of the situation on the ground. We recognize the need for the Council to react and act in discharging its core responsibility in many respects, in strongly condemning terrorism as it has always done, in recognizing the right of states to defend themselves as inscribed in the UN Charter, in always protecting civilians, in supporting humanitarian efforts, in avoiding further exacerbation or any spillover of an already tense, complex and dangerous situation and in chartering a clear path for peace, security, progress, and dignity for all Israelis and Palestinians. We abstained because the text presented failed to present the full picture and to incorporate core elements on substantial issues. We remain hopeful there is room to continue to remain actively engaged with the hope to use at best our time and energies to come together to respond to the many urgent and pressing needs on the ground. This critical situation doesn't need a competition between texts or a protagonism between member states. It requires active diplomacy by regional and international actors as it is happening now and here in the Council, engagement by all in good faith to come together to respond in the best possible way to all critical imperatives and needs on the ground. And I thank you. I thank the representative of Albania for their statement. And I now call the representative of France. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, the terrorist attack carried out on the 7th of October by Hamas is without a doubt the worst uh, experienced by Israel since its creation. 
that France stands uh, in this uh, difficult time, uh, shoulder to shoulder with Israel. Uh, Israel's security uh, uh, can must be protected, and uh, Israel has the right to defend itself. Uh, humanitarian assistance for Gaza is also essential. Protection of civilians is uh, is an imperative, and respect to the Geneva Convention uh, is necessary for everyone. The population of Gaza is also a victim of uh, Hamas. France voted against the draft resolution presented by Russia because several essential elements were lacking. France would like this council to now uh, unite itself behind uh, the draft proposed by the Brazilian presidency and that we agree to condemn this terrorist attack. <coughs> uh, ensure humanitarian assistance and protect the civilian population of Gaza. The Security Council today, more than ever, must uh, shoulder its responsibilities. Thank you. Representative of France for their statement. I now give the floor to the permanent observer of the observer state of Palestine. Mr. President, 10 days, for, for 10 days, you have been watching Israel assaulting over 2 million Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip, people being killed, injured, displaced, terrorized. Israel has not spared a single Palestinian family in Gaza. No one should forget that these are human lives, that Palestinian lives matter too, and no one should entertain the illusion that killing more Palestinians will ever make Israelis more secure. Israel has besieged the Gaza Strip for 17 years, has launched repeated aggressions against our people there. Did it make it more secure? How can it convince anyone that killing more Palestinians, more innocent Palestinians, children, women, men, old and young, is the answer? I came to this council many times telling you, the Palestinian people no longer believe help is on the way. Prove them wrong restore hope in collective action. You now have important decisions to make, decisions that determine how the next days will look like for the Palestinian people, for the region, and the entire world. We implore you, be guided by the rule of international law with no exception or ex exceptionalism allowed. Don't send the signal that the Palestinian lives don't matter. Don't dare say Israel is not responsible for the bombs it is dropping over their heads. Don't justify the killings. Don't blame the victim. And I repeat, don't. Don't do that. What is happening in Gaza is not a military operation. It is a full-scale assault against our people. It is massacres against innocent civilians. Nothing in natural law and international law allows for targeting of civilians and such indiscriminate, barbaric attacks against them. Israel has killed, as of now, 3,000 Palestinians, overwhelmingly civilians. More than half of them are women and children. More than 1,000 Palestinian children have been killed. I repeat, more than 1,000 Palestinian children have been killed so far in this assault. Israel has killed entire families, several, several generations at a time. As of this moment, 
47 families totaling 500 people have been massacred. Still more may be under the rubble. 1,000 people unaccounted for. Most likely they are under the rubble. How do you justify that? You cannot. Every day, Palestinians are killed by Israeli soldiers or settlers for years now. And yet, you always press us to choose the peaceful path forward. You ask us to show restraint. You tell us that violence is not the answer, even as Israel continued colonizing and annexing our land and maiming and killing our people. Why then? Why then, when Israelis are killed, you would, uh, you, when Israelis are killed, would anyone condone unhinged violence being unleashed against our people? Double standard. Why would this council be unable to call for a ceasefire now to stop the assault and the massacres? Stopping the killing and destruction is indis indispensable. The humanitarian and health system in Gaza has collapsed. Over one million people have been displaced. People cannot even bury their loved ones and mourn them. Lifting the siege and ensuring immediate and unhindered humanitarian access are equally urgent to save lives. I told this council months ago, regardless how hard taking the necessary decisions may seem now, the consequences of not taking them are infinitely higher. We are at that moment. Taking these decisions then would have saved many lives now. Further delay will only condemn more people to certain death. You know what is worthy of your unconditional support? It is the rule of international law and human rights, justice and peace. So no Palestinians and no Israelis are killed anymore. I repeat, so no Palestinians and no Israelis are killed anymore. So our people can finally live in freedom and dignity in their ancestral land, and two states, Palestine and Israel, can live side by side in peace and security in line with your resolutions and international law. We stood in the midst of the storm and stated no civilian civilians should be killed. International law has to be upheld. At the same time, Israeli officials were speaking of mighty vengeance. Don't you think Palestinians have much to avenge, including the 2.3 million Palestinians in the Gaza Strip whose lives are being shattered once again as we speak? This logic will destroy us all. It should not be tolerated. It is not enough to state that you disagree with it. You need to actually stop it. Israeli officials said, justifying their assault on our people in Gaza, that they were fighting human animals, quote unquote. What would have been your reaction if any Palestinian official had done the same. They said they would cut water, electricity, fuel, and food for millions of Palestinians and did so in an inhumane and unlawful collective punishment as bombs were destroying every remaining aspect of life in the Gaza Strip. Mr. President, Three things must be done now. Anything else would be legally, morally, and politically unacceptable. One, 
stop the assault on our people now. Two, allow immediate and unimpeded humanitarian access throughout the Gaza Strip now. Three, stop the forced transfer of our people now. Civilians should be protected wherever they are. Israel has no right to force them to choose between forced displacement or death, or subject them to both. Nowhere, in, nowhere is safe in Gaza. Families embrace every night not knowing if it is for the last time. You have the staggering numbers of those that were killed. I wish you could take a look at their lives, how they pursued it with courage and creativ creativity despite monumental hardships, a blockade and repeated assaults, only to see it taken away in an instant. Think of the pain of those who survive. Think of how the rest of their lives would look like, including the over 10,000 wounded so far, if they survive this nightmare. In the next hour, Israel will kill 12 Palestinian civilians, including five children, and then the next, and the next, and the next, until you decide to act. It is important to recognize the need to protect civilians and to respect international law. It is far more important to actually provide such protection and uphold the law. Nothing can justify the killing of civilians, said all of you repeatedly a few days ago. Regardless of the legitimate aspirations of the Palestinian people, their legitimate grievances, the pain and suffering they endured, and continue to endure regardless of the disposition, occupation, colonization, blockade, killing, mass imprisonment. They cannot resort to violence to free their land or protect their people. Then, by the same logic, nothing can justify the killing of Palestinian civilians. Discrimination and double standards are not only unjust, they undermine the rule of international law everywhere. Think of your credibility the day after. Think of deepening divide between the West and the Arab and Muslim world, between North and South, between communities. Our conflict is a political one, not a religious one. That is what makes it solvable, but it has an impact given its significance regionally and internationally in coexistence and peace across the world. If you do not want a regional spillover, an international spillover, stop the massacres, start there, start now. We are grateful for the efforts of all those who are mobilizing to stop the carnage, to allow humanitarian access and to put an end to the forced transfer. We will continue working with them. Every minute counts, and, and the Palestinian people in Gaza have no time to lose. Say the race. Mr. President, in conclusion, to the Palestinian people I say, it might seem that the world has abandoned you, has abandoned your children, that you're left alone at the hands of the unjust occupation that wishes to ensure that your cause fades into obscurity. But I assure you that the free people around the world, and there are millions, the peoples of conscience are with you. They hear you. They see you. They support you. They fill the streets of the capitals of the world. They're rejecting 
Israeli crimes against you. They're supporting your freedom, your dignity, your just cause. Know that justice and peace are coming. There is no doubt about that. The Israeli occupation, regardless of how much it kills and destroys and oppresses, it will end. The state of Palestine with East Jerusalem as its capital will be established. We will not fade away. We will not waver. We will not fade away. We will not waver. We will heal our wounds. We will restore our hope. We will remain. We will survive because right is on our side. And those who have right on their sides do not die, do not fade away. They are reborn. They stay. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the permanent observer of the observer state of Palestine for his statement. And I'll give the floor to the representative of Israel. Thank you, Mr. President. I will begin by saying that if Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people, as President Abbas stated just yesterday, it is puzzling that his representative is present in this meeting, let alone voicing an opinion on behalf of the people in Gaza that elected the ISIS-like Hamas murderers in Gaza 17 years ago. I hope we all here understand that should any representative of the Palestinian Authority choose to enter Gaza today or in any other day, they would probably meet the same fate that many of their colleagues met in 2007, being thrown off 15-story buildings by Hamas. Distinguished Council Members, the Security Council is facing one of the most pivotal moments in, his, in its history. This is a turning point for the Council, a moment of truth which will tell humanity whether this Council's very existence holds legitimacy, whether the UN retains a sembleness of a moral compass. This institution was founded upon the ashes of the Holocaust, the genocide of the Jewish people, and just over a week ago, we witnessed yet another attempt at Jewish genocide, the Nazi Hamas massacre of babies, mothers, fathers, and the elderly. Every council member should understand that Hamas is driven by an ideology no different than the Nazis. In their original charter, they make this message very clear, and I quote, Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it just as it obliterated others before it. Article 7 says, the day of judgment will not come about until Muslims fight Jews and kill them. Read it for yourself. It is, it is Hitler's Mein Kampf on steroids. Hamas's very name, which stands for Harakat el Mukawama el Islamiyah, means the Islamic Resistance Movement. This is not a political organization. This is a terror organization no different than ISIS or Al Qaeda. Hamas doesn't seek to liberate. We withdrew from Gaza 18 years ago. Hamas seeks to exterminate. This is their purpose and stated goal. And after the horrors that we suffered over a week ago, we must all understand that these are not empty threats. This is an action plan. And if Hamas has the opportunity to commit these atrocities again, they will. Hamas will not stop until Israel is obliterated. This is why, dear colleagues, for the safety of our people and the security of our future, Israel must obliterate Hamas first. We must do so, not for revenge, not for retaliation. We must do so for self-preservation. Such atrocities can never be committed again. And the only way to ensure this is by eliminating this barbaric terror group's capabilities. 
Over 1,400 Israelis were butchered. Thousands were injured. Nearly 200 hostages were taken to Gaza to be tortured, raped, and defiled, among them dozens of different nationalities. Proportionally, proportionally this atrocity is 15 times bigger than 9-11. But America's enemies were 7,000 miles away, while Israel's are 7,000 feet away. Mr. President, for the past 16 years, the international community and the UN have been complacent to Hamas's terrorist buildup. The world has kept its head in the sand as Hamas embedded its missiles and rockets and war machine within and under the civilian population of Gaza. It accepted an absurd reality that a law-abiding democracy could live side by side with cancerous genocidal terrorists thirsty, thirsty for Israeli blood that fires tens of thousands of missiles and rockets indiscriminately at our civilians. Future generations will look back in disbelief that the world could be so naive only 80 years after Hitler. But this is no longer the case. We have seen with our own eyes that nothing will change Hamas's ideology, nothing. Not the rehabilitation of Gaza, not economic incentives, not any promise of a brighter future. The UN tried, the US tried, many of you tried, but everyone failed. Nothing can change a genocidal ideology, nothing. There is only one solution to curing a cancer, and it is the evisceration of every cancerous cell. The international community has poured billions of dollars into Gaza, and it all went to Hamas's war machine and its subterranean city of terror. Abundant resources and aid destined for the people of Gaza were squandered by these barbaric terror monsters. Every inch of the Gaza Strip has been exploited for Hamas's violent goals. To Hamas, Gazan civilians are nothing more than cannon fodder, human shields who in, who in death become pawns for Hamas's libelous propaganda campaign. They are threatening right now, as we speak here, they are threatening Gazans not to evacuate south. By the way, as we evacuated our civilian near our southern border, and then use their bodies to recruit countries to pressure Israel. So let me be clear. Israel is on a rescue mission, a rescue mission to save our hostages, a rescue mission to save our future and to save the people of Gaza from their savage tyrants, a rescue mission. This rescue, rescue mission can end quickly. Should Hamas put down their arms tomorrow, return our hostages and turn themselves in, this war can end without one more shot being fired. Why are you not calling on Hamas to do this? Why isn't this part of the resolutions? Distinguished council members, I will reiterate, the Security Council now stands at one of its most pivotal crossroads. Will the Council support the fight for civilization, or will it incentivize the genocidal jihadists who aim to murder all the infidels? For a body dedicated to security, this shouldn't even be a question. The first step this Council must take before any calls for aid, before any calls for aid, calm or restraint, is to designate Hamas as the murderous terror organization that it is, just as the Council did with ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Secondly, and no less important, this Council must support Israel's right to defend itself. But supporting this right doesn't mean echoing empty words. It means standing in solidarity with Israel in our rescue mission to obliterate Hamas's terror capabilities. If Hamas is not obliterated, such, uh, such atrocities will be repeated. 
and not only in Israel. Supporting Israel's right to defend itself means supporting Israel's goal of eradicating these cancerous jihadists. Israel, dear colleagues, is a law-abiding country that upholds international law. We are facing, as you all know, a genocidal terror group that doesn't even recognize the existence of international law. It must be remembered by the Council. So how can it be that the focus of the Security Council is not? And I elaborate. Number one, to designate Hamas as a terror organization. Number two, to hold Hamas fully and solely accountable for the situation in Gaza. Number three, to fully support Israel's right to defend itself. And number four, to immediately and unconditionally demand from Hamas to release all the abducted hostages. I urge you all to think about these objectives and that they all be addressed in any future discussions. Israel will not accept having our hands, her hands tied until we are, while we are fighting for our security and for our children's future. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Israel for their statement, and I'll give the floor to the representative of Jordan. Uh, say the Mr. President, at the outset, I congratulate you on Brazil's assumption of the presidency of the Security Council for this month, and we wish you every success. I am honored to make this statement on behalf of the Arab group. Mr. President, the Security Council today is meeting as the Israeli brutal war continues again as the Gaza Strip, bringing death and destruction and threatening the explosion of wider cycles of violence in the entire region. The Arab Legion here stresses the need to work to immediately stop this war and to prevent its expansion so that we can end the exacerbation of the humanitarian catastrophe in the Gaza Strip. The group stresses that the failure by the international community to end this war is a failure in the application of international law and in the protection of common humanitarian values and the protection of innocent civilians that face the hell of war. They cannot find the simplest necessities of life, shelter, food, drinking water, electricity, and health care. We stress that the international silence against what the Gaza Strip is facing, the killing and the war, is a silence vis-a-vis -vis an, aggression, an aggression that dehumanizes, dehumanizes the Gazans and pre prevents them from the right to protection. And it is a silence vis-a-vis -vis Israeli violation of international law. And uh, we stress uh, that Israel's prevention of uh, the delivery of humanitarian aid to Gaza and forcing more than a million citizens um, to leave their homes is a grave violation of, violation of international law and in IHL. Here we stress uh, the need to deliver such assistance immediately without delay. Here we commend the unprecedented effort and role of uh, UNRWA in assisting civilians in the Gaza Strip, we stress the need for the international community to provide UNRWA with immediate support in light of the lack of funding for UNRWA so that it would be able to implement its mandate and its obligation according to the UN mandate. Mr. President, the Arab group stresses that any attempt for forced displacement of our brothers and sisters, the Palestinians, from their homeland or to threaten such displacement to Egypt and other neighboring countries is a rejected and condemned crime, and it is a grave violation of the Fourth Geneva Convention of 1949. Here, we stress the need to implement the rules of international law and IHL and ethical standards without distinction and 
this should not be based on nationality or identity. The international community must address the war against Gaza using a same set of standards, condemning the killing of uh, civilian Palestinians as it did with Israeli civilians. They are victims, those civilians, regardless of their identity or nationality. Mr. President, we recall here that what Israel is doing is not a right to defend itself. It is unfortunate that a number of countries keep repeating that Israel has the right to defend itself in the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip is an occupied territory. Here, we we'll recall the advisory opinion of the ICJ on the question of the separation wall of 2004, particularly paragraph 139 of this opinion, according to which Israel does not have the right to defend itself within occupied Palestinian territory. The provisions of IHL are applicable here, pertaining to military response to armed attacks in occupied territories. The occupying power needs to respect the principles of distinction between military and civilian objects. And it should not launch attacks against civilians and civilian objects, as is happening, and there should be proportionality in response. It should take precautionary measures to protect civilians. Through following up the developments of the situation, it is clear that Israel's military actions in Gaza do not respect the bare minimum stipulated by the international humanitarian law. It is not even claiming to be doing so, as you have heard a while ago. And the statements by its senior military and political officials mean that everything it has been committing and will commit will go beyond all ethical, moral, legal, and humanitarian standards against defenseless people and the international community is not heeding the calls. The Arab group reaffirms that the comprehensive and just peace in accordance with the resolutions of international legitimacy and the Arab Peace Initiative is a strategic Arab choice and is the only means to protect the entire region from the cycle of violence. In closing, we stress that Israel will not attain peace and security if security and freedom is not provided for the Palestinian people in their independent state with Occupy Jerusalem as its capital on the borders of the 4th of June. I thank you. I thank the representative of Jordan for their statement. There are no more names inscribed on the list of speakers. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>